Welcome to the very first practical task of this course. In this first task, we will create a batch renaming script. In the example application chosen here, you can see that we have two types of files. One is called document, the other type is called file. When using our script, we can then define that the name file should be renamed to the name document, as seen in the example here. This will be our very first practical task, so let's dive right into it and create this batch rename script. We'll start by importing the OS library into our scope in our Python script here. And once we've done that, we want to set two variables, the to be replaced string and the replacement string. We will simply call them search and replace here. And to start out with, let's give them some fixed values, in our case file and document. The next section will be the really interesting one, where we use the imported operating system library to get the files in our folder. So let's create a variable called dir content for directory content and call the os.list directory method. If we wait a second, we can see the definition of the method here, and it gives us the indication that we need to provide it with a path. The path we will use here is just a dot, which means the current directory we're in. Since we also have folders in our directory, we want to filter our dir content for files that are actually of type file. We will use a list comprehension to filter down our dir content to only contain documents. We will use the os.path.isFile method of our OS library to do that. The docs variable now contains a list of elements of type file. One thing I also want to add here is a variable called renamed. I want to set it to zero. This will track the number of files that have been renamed in the process. In order to give this a try now, we want to add some logging. We will use a simple print statement here to do that. So let's add a simple print statement that prints out the number of actual documents and the number of elements in our directory to see how many folders we have. In addition to that, I will add an indication on what we are going to do next, which is going through all the files and checking if they match the search pattern. So let's switch over to the terminal for the first time. What I did here is type ls, which is going to list all the files in the directory. With the right directory selected, we can now execute our Python file. You can see that I'm adding dot dot slash a few times here. That's just because of my folder structure. And we need to actually find the batch renamer py file that we're going to execute since we are in the dot directory at the moment. Since we can see that our script seems to be working correctly, we can go back to our script and do the iteration part now. We use a for loop to iterate over all the documents in our list and of course again add a comment to make sure that we understand what we are doing. And this next step is to check whether our document name has the search pattern in it. We can use a in statement here in Python which checks whether the string is contained in our search string. If the search string is in our document name we want to create a new name that contains the replacement string. In our case, it will be document. In order to quickly and easily replace the search string with the replace string, we will call document.replace. And this is a simple string operation we can see here. In order to trigger the actual renaming on the operating system, we will use the OS library again. For now, we want to comment that out because we don't want to do any modifications without knowing what is going to happen and what the results will be. So we will only do a logging statement here for now and see if our script is working first. So let's add a simple logging statement that tells us what the file will be renamed to. And since we increased our rename counter by one, we can also add a final logging statement that tells us how many files have been renamed. One thing to note here is that in no case you should do modifications on your system automatically without testing your scripts beforehand with some logging or anything like that. So let's switch back to our terminal and re-execute our script. This time we can see that we get a lot of information about what files have been renamed to what new name. If we re-execute our script we can see the exact same output since no modifications have been done yet. Moving back to our script we will now uncomment our os.rename method that will rename the files on our system. 
Let's go back to our terminal and re-execute our script. This time we can see the same output, but when we execute it a second time, we can see that zero of 201 files have been renamed, since all of the files are now called document instead of file itself. Judging by the output of the terminal, we can now see that our script does what we want. But if we look at our files in our folder, we have Python files and we have TXT files. One additional feature we want to add here now is that we can separate between the file endings of our documents. So maybe we only want to replace txt files or maybe we want to only replace python files. This is the next step we're going to take. What we have to do in order to get there is we have to separate the file name from our document extension. In order to do that we want to again use a handy method of the os library we imported before. This will give us a document name and the file type of our given file. The method is called split text and you can find it in the path subsection of the library. Since we now have the file type as a simple string, we can add a simple if check here. So let's check the file type against a given variable that is called type filter for now. What we have to do now is we have to add that type filter variable and give it some... For now we just want to filter for the Python extension. Going back to our if check, we now want to refactor this. So we have to remove the pass part and only indent the section that is going to be executed if our filter is met. And since the document name now is called doc name instead of simply doc, we have to replace that as well and add the file ending to our new name again. Once we have done all the refactoring with our new name and the doc name, we can then go back and re-execute our script in our terminal. We can now see that only files with the ending of .py, so Python extension, have been renamed instead of all the files that are called document. If we list our directory content again, we can now see that only the Python files are called file and all the document files are called .txt. This concludes this first practice task. Let's quickly go back and recap what we did here. So we used a lot of the OS libraries methods to do this kind of task. You'll see the list here method being used in the later chapters as well as the isFile and isFolder methods. By splitting the text of our document, we can get the document name and the file name. And last but not least, we used the os.rename function to do a modification on the system and actually rename our files. Let's go ahead and create a command line interface in the next video.